Alrighty, alrighty. We're gonna get started here. Alrighty, alrighty. Whoop, whoop. We on, we on, we on, we on. We on. Stuff to sit straight. I don't know how that's not straight. <laughs> I don't know how that's not straight, but let's 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 work with it. All right, we on here, y'all. <laughs> Glory to God. So those who want to get on here, this is School of the Royal Rulers. That's what I do on Sundays, during the week, Wednesdays and Thursday nights. I do school of the royal rulers in training and um this is the same number 6340617114 if you want to get on to the zoom now um let me introduce myself for those who don't know me i want to welcome you to this is a master's class uh my name is odelia jackson and i am a master mentor with the uh, Zane and and Katora Inter International Institute of Pneumatology. All right, now open up with some prayer and we're gonna get started. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, just for who you are. We thank you for this opportunity to um, train others and to plant seed in a in this generation and the generation that come and we just thank you that your word does not return to you void we thank you that um that the word will fall on good soil that it would take root pray for understanding open the eyes of their understanding open up their minds that they will understand the scriptures and realize who who you who you in, uh, originally in intentional for man before the foundation of the world and uh, and that you didn't change your mind. And so Father, have your way. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, the use of everything you have given us for life and godliness and learning how to use it and how to walk in self-existence instead of cold dependent, Lord, that we would operate from our reference point and that is Jesus Christ. And so as he is in this world, so are we. And so we thank you, Lord, for the uh, touching of the hearts, and, uh, breaking up those follow grounds that they would really actually grasp what is in, being said here today. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get started here. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone that's here. And those who are on the recordings and those who will see this later, we want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And these are some of the things we had talked about uh, last month about the kingdom must be studied and understood and lived. So I'm going a little backwards here. And that what the scriptures talks about the kingdom of heaven that they chill, you can't even enter this uh the kingdom even if you're born again you can't even enter if you're not uh you don't have a childlike faith you could be born again see that's not born again is not enough it's more to this than that and so you must enter with a childlike faith that's the way god that's the way we ought to know god the way god want us to know him and um and and, and we already had talked about we talk about the contract and the covenant on wednesdays and thursday nights so um, let's see where we're going at here. And we've been saying Matthew 6.33. That is how uh, we get to discover our true identity and our, our purpose, the reason why you are here, and um, the assignment that God has placed on you of, of how he designed and wired you. So um, 
Matthew 6, 33, and, 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 and it gives a clear uh, instruction. It's clear instruction. It says, seek ye first. That's a mandate commandment. And, and it tells us to how what to seek, the kingdom first and his righteousness. And then all the other things shall be added unto you. So that's a, uh, there, there's a condition there and uh, terms and condition that in order to receive those things, everything you need for uh, um, all that you, uh, what is that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added. So the other things that added unto you is if you seek the kingdom first and his righteousness, that's the term, that's the condition. But if you don't do that, then, you know, don't expect all those other things afterwards. Little boy doing all right, so you got, and this is how we seek him through the word. This is the word right here seeking his kingdom through his word, seeking him first, seeking his royal rule, his active royal rule, and um, his royal rule and reign. And that royal rule, the word of God, should be reigning in you. That's why we need to know the covenant contract. It's important you know that because it's, that's more than just being intimate with God. And it's more than being, uh, spending time with God. You got to know what the contract says. It has conditions and uh, terms. And that's how you have a relationship with God. Okay. All right. And so, and this is, we talked about how you enter the kingdom. We said, this is how you enter the kingdom of God is through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And, um, and Jesus shared that with Nicodemus that he must be born again to even see the kingdom. Now, in the other scripture we just talked about, it talked about you must be born again. I mean, uh, it says you must, uh, to enter the kingdom, you, you have to come with childlike faith. That means if you know everything, then can't nobody tell you nothing. Therefore, nothing can get in there, okay, because your heart is closed. And so you have to come with childlike faith. Children's like faith, is their heart is soft and is, is uh, you call it bendable and, and it's easy to receive. And it doesn't have all that stuff to fight, you know, because the child doesn't know all those things. And so it don't fight all those things because it doesn't have all that stuff in them. And so that is why you have to have a childlike faith for anything to get in. That's like having, that's like if you take uh, dirt, you have soft dirt that's easy to receive seed. And we have hard dirt. You got to break it up first before you can even get a seed in there. You got to plow the ground and all those things before you even get the seed in the ground for it to uh, grow, before it to germinate and all those things before it can grow. All right, thanks, I see you. And so these are some of the things we talked about last month. And so when you're born again, you become a citizen of the kingdom of God. And, and, and as a king, citizen of, the, of God, and you are a child of a king with no limitations. And those are some of the things you got to learn. And this is one of the reasons why we, we call it in training, royal rulers in training. Okay. <laughs> so royal, when you, when you're born into a royal family, you can see that with the royal family of William and, and his brother that they had to have a tutor to teach them how to be royal. So when you first born, you don't know how, so you gotta be taught. That's why he tell you to seek the kingdom first and his righteousness. So you could be trained in who you really are. And so the passport to the kingdom is you must be born again and uh, study, you must study the kingdom, you must come like a child, you must um, uh, obey what they said. Tell you to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All right. That was a little review from last one. Now we into that. <laughs> now we're here with um, 
in Christ, we exercise our kingly dominion in life. All right? So that's what the training is all about, especially if you don't know what kingly dominion is and life is. That's what. That's why you come and you take notes and you study. And as you do that, the spirit will open up your mind so that you would understand what the scriptures are saying and what you are learning here. So, so as we talked about in Christ, we exercise a kingly dominion in life. Well, you, uh, if you didn't know it, if you're not, bo if you're born again, then you are um, kings and, and priests. Some people say kingly priests, but kings and priests. And this is how uh, Revelations 1, 5, and 6, since nobody on here, I might have to read myself. Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests unto God. That's in Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Okay? He washed us in from our sin, not in our sin. It says from our sin in his own blood and made us kings and priests unto God. You'll find that in Revelations 1, 5, and 6. And then the other side just says washed in the blood. Okay, washed in the blood. And so... As we talked about those things, I wanted to sing this song so you understand what we're talking about. Today is what Resurrection Sunday, and I, I you know, all I know is Jesus was resurrected. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I know what the we read with the Bible, what the Bible says, but this is Resurrection Sunday, and to me, that's every day, every day. Okay, so let's sing this song here. This talks about Jesus as the King, how He is Lord of all. And if you take a note, Lord means he is our king. He is the, uh, the Messiah. He is uh, owner and, and, and the master. And just as he is in this world, in 1 John 4, 17, so are we. When you start learning who your true identity is, this is how you operate. You operate from this reference point of Jesus Christ, the spirit of Jesus so let's sing this song. Um, it has a three up there. Um, I don't know how they got messed up lately, but let me go back. And so that three means you sing that part three times, okay? And so listen to my tune. <laughs> Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of all. He is Lord of all. He is Lord of the sky. He is Lord of the sea. He is Lord of you. He is Lord of me. And he died on the cross to make us free and restore our royalty. My picture's got moved around a little bit. That's what that says right there. And restore our royalty then it says jesus is king of kings jesus is king of kings jesus is the king that saves and he rules and reigns okay let's try that one more time okay jesus is lord of all Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of all. He is Lord of all. Now, when we say Lord, we can say Jesus is owner. He is master. He is the king of all. So let's say Jesus is king of all. 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 He is king of all. Let's go back to Lord. He is Lord of the sky. He is Lord of the sea. He is Lord of you. He is Lord of me. And he died on the cross to make us free and restore our royalty. Jesus is king of kings. Jesus is King of Kings. 
Jesus is the king that saves, and he rules and reigns. All right, that's good, that's good. All right, amen, that's good. He's the king, he rules, he reigns, he's the owner, he's the master of the sky and the sea, of you and me. He's a king, he's a king that saves and rules and reigns. That's who Jesus is. He's not just the Savior. He's a king. He is the Messiah. All right? The other names, Yeshua and um, Yahweh and all those other names. Okay? So it's not just the Savior. Now let's look at this here picture right here with the, the little girl. And, and when I seen this little picture here, I thought about it. I said, you know what? She's looking up to the sky. But we're going to find out about a little bit about that because the world system teaches us to look away and to separate. But when you are born again, Jesus is in you. So I was not going to put this up here, but I wanted to show you the difference between um, us trying to separate Jesus from us. If you're born again, he is in you, okay? The scripture even tell us, we're going to see these other scriptures, this one, even the one right next to this one. So the question is, will you be my child? Now, all the children that's born, they, they are from God. They are from God. But they have to be born again. And so the question is, after you being born from your mommy's womb, um, now it is, will you be my child? And which you are his child, but he wants you to make a choice because God is, he doesn't make us do anything. You have to, he wants you to choose him. And so you have a free will to choose him or not. So, so to all who did uh, uh, John 1, 12 and 13. Okay, man, he calling me at the wrong time. Okay, <laughs> I have to tell him to call me back. <laughs> all right. So of uh, John 1, 12, and 13, to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. So when you're born again, you're born of God, okay? When you're first born from the mommy's womb, that is that's from the human thing, human side, but born again is of God, okay? So, uh, if anybody have any questions or don't understand, you just type it in the text, okay? And then let's look at the scripture over here. Remember I said she's looking up. We've been taught this, to look of, that God is up there. No, when you are born again, he is in you, Okay? So I just want to make that clear. He is in you. Now, over here it says that uh, Galatians 2.20, this picture is hiding in scripture. And it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And so if it's no longer you that lives, and it's Christ is that lives in you, right? Um, so we have to uh, don't 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 run rush shot over that. Listen to what it is saying. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ. I need to name this mic. I hope it's on. <laughs> but Christ who lives in me. So when you're born again, you don't be looking up, okay? You look, you, you, he is within you. The spirit of God is in you, okay? So no looking up, okay? Remember, he's in you. He's not in the sky somewhere in heaven. He in you, okay? So you've been crucified with him. No longer is I who live. Christ is in you. 
And that's why the scripture first uh four, I mean not first, first John four seventeen, it talks about uh that we are as Jesus is in this world, so are you. And that's because he's in you, okay? This is how he never leaves you, nor forsake you, because he's in you, okay? All right. So now we got to learn. Now, once you get born again and you start learning about Jesus and the spirit and how Jesus lives in you and you don't have to look outside of yourself because you are one with him, the Bible says that when we unite ourselves with him, we become one spirit. We become one spirit when you unite yourself with Christ. That's because you're be, that's when you're born again. Now let's look at this up here. It says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So when you're born again, you gotta remember that you're he didn't give you that spirit. That's you get fear that comes from not from God, okay? <laughs> So dominion is ability to function at full capacity of your identity. So in Genesis 1, 26, God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Okay, we have done some um, studies on um, image and likeness. And so um, I don't know what this audience is like because I don't see anybody right now, but Whoever gets on, whether it's later, this might not be a good time. I don't know. Anyway, God has given us dominion. And dominion means to rule. And so dominion, and he gave you certain things that you need to be ruling and multiplying and, and subduing. And therefore, he has not given us the spirit of fear. So he's, that's not in the list, okay? He didn't give us fear, okay? But he's given you dominion, authority power, love, and a sound mind. So when you're having dominion, you operate from the sovereignty of God. You operate. That's your, your reference point is the spirit of God. Y'all got that? So to me, to live is Christ. That's Philippians 1.21. And we already went over this same scripture here, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. For you to live is Christ, right? Because you've been crucified with him, right? No, it is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. We need to know this at a young age, okay? We need to know this as young as possible. I wish I knew this when I was young, okay? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, this is this is like if you taking notes and stuff, write this down. Christ lives in me. I'm crucified with him. Just as he is, so am I in this world. And he has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So are uh we and this is another part of what you, you know, part of your identity and some of the things that we say that is uh makes you look outside of who God says we are. So let's just take a look at this. And it says, are you looking for the true temple of God? That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And that's Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. So a lot of times we used to think uh, before uh, we start learning about uh, the church from the perspective of kingdom mindset, we used to say, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. No, you're not going to church. See, it's a matter of what you're saying out your mouth and what you're thinking in your mind. It has a lot to do with your paradigm, uh, you know, shift or your thinking that's what paradigm is the way you think and so if you keep saying i'm going to church you you know you don't have that mindset that i am the church or i am the temple of god and that's what this says over here that uh 
because my body is a temple where my friend Jesus lives, okay? So these are young people here. We got to remember these bodies belong to the Lord. You give your life to him, they belong to him. And the Bible even tells you that the body was made for God and God for the body. And um, as you learn more, you you know you can wrap that around your head because it took me a little bit. Okay, so uh, so your body is made for God. It's uh, some of the things that we had learned about the Holy Spirit, about the Spirit uh, that dwells in our bodies. So that's what make your body is a temple uh, of where the Spirit lives. The Spirit of God lives. All right. So what is the church? It says right here, plain as day, we are the church. That's the mindset we need to have. We are the church. The place that we go to worship is a building. It's just a place to worship. You can worship at home. Okay, it's a place to fellowship, you know. They used to fellowship back in the days. Of, they used to go from home to home, okay. But you and I am the church. Okay, I can't teach it all here tonight, but just a little bit by a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so this other side over here is anybody on note? Nobody else yet? Uh, hey, Zay, I see you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to start inviting uh, other people because I had the other children on early this morning, and um, we're just gonna have to put it out there. Um, all right, where am I going with this here? I went up too far. Uh, I don't know how I get up here. <laughs> Come on, the right one. All right. One minute. Give me a minute here. This thing's sliding all over the place. No, I was not going to use all this tonight. <laughs> I had it set up where I would... Uh, only use part of it because I know everybody don't grasp everything at the same time. So, and I don't know how this 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 post got like this. <laughs> so let me see. Let me go back here. I don't touch something I shouldn't have. Right, let me close this out. Hold on a minute, y'all. One minute. <laughs> I'm gonna get us back to where we're supposed to be. Right here. All right. Ta-da. So this other side over here says, know ye not, let me move my picture out of the way, <laughs> so I can read, know ye not, ye are the temple of God, not a building, y'all, you are the temple of God, the spirit of God lives in you, and that the spirit of God dwells in you, the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Y'all got that? First Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. You are the temple of God. We are the church, okay? <laughs> and then you go on, and you learn more about certain things. I, I tell the other children because they're a little older, I say, if something that you, you didn't catch on to, we got all this technology. If you don't know what the words mean or something that I can't get to in this lesson, go look it up. Okay, you got to go look it up. That's how you search. That's how you seek. That's how you find. And that's how you learn. And the spirit will meet you there because you're seeking. All right. So thank you, Father. I'm reading what this says. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for my high calling as a, stu a steward. Well, we all call the steward, uh, uh, especially our gifts. You, you're supposed to, I say manage, but... uh. Steward is the same thing. I've seen that in the Bible too. Uh, uh, steward it what God has placed in your care because you want to you're be held accountable for what God has given to you. Your gifts, uh, the re, uh, finding out why you're here that's one of your uh, uh, responsibilities. And uh, this here says an offering as an act, our offering are an act of worship lord you give us 100 help me to be generous with with you so 
what that's saying is that could be not just money or offering. That could be the gifts, your talent, your time. And um, because all of this is what God gave us. He gave us the gifts, the talents, the time. He gave us the strength to go to work or, you know, whatever we do uh, to, uh, to do his will. He gives all that to us. You know, the breath that we breathe now is because of him that we live and move and have our being. And that's what the word says. Now, here goes some things that we need to learn how to steward. Since the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? This, in this picture here, you see this guy watching the TV. Now, all of us probably watch TV. It's how, what is, what is ruling you? That's my thing. Because you, you're supposed to have dominion, right? We talked about dominion. It's to rule, to have dominion authority over. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so there's nothing wrong with watching a little TV just as long as it don't rule you and watch what you, and what are you watching that will enter through the gates of your eyes and your ears and your mouth and your nose and all those things. Uh, that's what you have dominion over, this area, you, okay? <laughs> yeah. So... Um, are you, to see this other side over here, it says, are you influencing the world or is it influencing you? The scripture tells us to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And if we're watching this stuff here, our minds won't be transformed to, you know, the will of God, his good and, and perfect will. Because if, if we spend our, all our time looking at this, okay, because that has taken control. Now, if you you take you take responsibility over your your uh, and, and and discipline yourself, then uh, you could you probably could do a little bit of that. You don't need to do a lot of that neither. But you know, don't let it rule you. So, is it influencing you? Now, I could use something else, too, because I thought about it when I was getting this picture here. I said, you know, the kids love the games today. And there is a lot of influence and codependence. That's, I see a lot of codependence. I've been learning about that codependence and self-existence that this uh, technology is, is causing them to be codependent because they choose an old uh, to allow this thing to rule over them instead of doing some other things with their life. Like, I don't see nobody jumping no rope. I don't see nobody skating. I don't see nobody riding no bike. Uh, and, you know, um, most children are inside playing the games. Now, I know we got the corona now, but before the corona, this was going on, okay? <laughs> so discipline is a key to... Um, a lot of things, okay? Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. So if you're not disciplined, you'll still be in front of that TV playing the game or, or watching TV. You won't read a book. You won't be writing a book, okay? <laughs> because the TV got you. And you know, they call those idiot box. Um, the power of discipline on the other side there is how to, uh, you know, learning how to discipline your mind. because Every, what a man thinketh, or boy or girl, what you think is what, you know, the scripture says, what you think, that's what, that's what you are. What you're speaking out your mouth, okay? That's what you're going to have. So you have, to, you have to learn how to have discipline over your mind and over what you say out your mouth, okay? So that means as... Um, we need to learn responsibility. Responsibility says so self-existence is part of being responsible, okay? Um, and when you're responsible, you're not codependent. You're, you're, you're in acting in self-existence. So leadership is about taking responsibility, not, um, I got over here, not excuses, okay? Excuses is a person with, you know, codependency, a mindset, you know, and not uh, responding with self-existence. So 
Leadership is taking responsibility. And that first responsibility or dominion is over yourself, okay? And dominion, we don't take dominion over another human being. We take dominion over ourselves in the uh, area of uh, atmosphere, uh, um, fear. I never say that word right. Sphere <laughs> in which God gave you. That's what you master and you rule. Okay, let's go to the next thing. I don't see anybody else in here. Hey, Zay, I'm glad you're still here. <laughs> so the dis discipline of the sons of God. That's what you are. You born again, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And so that's what this is all about, training and self-existence. We don't want you growing up being codependent upon things and people but set for God, okay? You know, coming to God is because he's inside of you, so that's self-existing. you consulting yourself. If God is in you and you're being ruled and, and he's reigning in you, okay? So principles of self-existence is mind renewal. It is learning his perspective. You learn God's perspective. How do you do that? You, you, first of all, you got to read the word. You need to understand the word, and you need to know what the contract is, the uh, the covenant between you and God, and then you need to do what that says so that it can manifest, okay? And nobody here to ask me any questions yet, so, so anybody have any questions later, you know, just type it in, all right? So... Now, as I think about the television and the games and all the stuff that is not going to help us grow spiritually, I was looking at this picture here. Was, I was a little bit laughing at it, too, but it says snap, crackle, and pop, okay? <laughs> so, renewal. This fella needs a complete overall, okay? <laughs> so, if, you don't, if, if your mind is not up aligned up with the king, eventually, that's what you're going to be looking like. Somebody with snack, crackle, and pop, a braid is like, you make no sense. So don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? We need to renew our minds daily, daily. It's a washing of your, your spirit, your soul, and the cleansing and the renewal of who, what God wants you to do, how he wants you to live. And, 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 and that's through you. There's some things that we have to do in the in this world as sons of God that we are responsible for. And, and if we're not uh, in tune with him, then we can't do what we have been called to do. You can't do what you don't know. And I think that is where I was going to stop at, except for this here part here. When God made you, he made his very best. That's something and very important that you need to know. God made his very best. And I always ask the children, I say, well, I, why is that? Why, when he made you, he made his very best. And I always tell them to go back to Genesis 126. And then that gives you the answer to that. He made his very best because he, when he made you, he said, let us make man in our image. You're made in his image. That's why. In his image and after his likeness. Okay, so uh, I wasn't planning on being on here that long. So does anybody have any questions? And anybody, I don't see anybody on here. You can you can type in some stuff if you're on Facebook. You can, there's a chat uh, box in, in here in the Zoom if you want to say anything in there. Um, the recording will be up. So you can see it on the uh, YouTube. And um, it's going to be on um, my brother Zane's page, and I'll and I'll have it on my page too. So, anybody have any questions? I'm trying to find out where this audience is at, so so that I know, so the spirit can show me where I need to be going at with this. All right. Okay, that's it for tonight. I'm gonna pray out and. Um, God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank you for those who will watch this uh, archives. And then uh, I'm really, I'm expecting um, live people 
next next month. Second Sunday. Every second Sunday, I'm expecting a lot of people, 7 p.m. All right. God bless each and every one of you. Um, I am Odelia Jackson, the master mentor for the Royal Rulers. So see you next time. God bless. Okay, let me see.